When we started understanding quantum physics and began using it to our advantage, we created all sorts of strange and new inventions. One of the fruits of this quantum tree is lasers. A laser source is an invention entirely reliant on quantum physics. Let's take a detailed look at how quantum mechanics brought this invention to life. Laser technology employs quantum mechanics in many different ways, such as in semiconductor lasers, solid-state lasers, gas lasers, fiber lasers, and so on. Although they use different techniques, their common feature is utilizing quantum mechanics to keep excited electrons in that state longer than usual. This shared principle is the foundation of lasers. In this video, let's examine a gas laser, the helium-neon laser. In quantum mechanics, when an electron is excited, there are probabilities associated with the energy levels it can transition to. Among these probabilities, those that are extremely small are called forbidden transitions. These transitions have such low probabilities due to fundamental physical laws such as conservation of momentum and symmetry principles. The first of these rules states that the angular momentum quantum number of an electron can change by only one unit. This rule arises from the parity symmetry of quantum mechanics. The solutions of the Schrodinger equation and the symmetric properties of the electric dipole operator require the change in the angular momentum quantum number to be one for the transition matrix elements to be non-zero. We understand that this rule is enforced by symmetries. However, if the excitation of the electron is carried out under suitable symmetries, this rule can be relaxed, allowing for transitions where the change in angular momentum is delta EL equals plus or minus 2, although these are of much lower probability. There are also situations where transitions can occur with varying probabilities, one of which involves the conservation of spin momentum. When electrons are excited via collisions, their momentum must be conserved as dictated by fundamental physical principles. Therefore, when an electron is excited through a collision, the change in the system's spin momentum must be zero. Electrons have spins of plus one half or minus one half, while photons have spins of plus one or minus one. Consequently, when an electron is excited by a photon, a change in spin is highly improbable because spin momentum conservation cannot be satisfied. However, this missing spin can be compensated for by providing energy to the system, such as imparting kinetic energy to the atom or pushing the electron. But these scenarios are very unlikely. If an electron is excited by another electron and the two electrons exchange spins, the total spin change will be zero. Thus, spin changes are more likely likely to occur when excitation happens via collisions with other electrons. Regardless of the excitation method, electrons must obey these rules when returning to their ground state. As a result, transitions with low probabilities take longer, while transitions with high probabilities occur more quickly. When an electron takes a long time to return to its ground state, the atom is said to be in a metastable state. This mechanism allows many atoms to remain in an excited state for an extended period simultaneously. This principle was deliberately utilized in the development of the helium-neon laser. Electron collisions are more advantageous than photon-induced excitations due to their high efficiency in producing metastable helium. Such details played a critical role in the technical success of laser design. Let's take a look at the properties of what we call a laser and, based on what we've learned, understand how these properties are achieved through restrictions and learn the working principle of lasers. Lasers, light amplification, by stimulated emission of radiation are devices developed for the controlled and intense production of light. The properties of a laser beam are these. A laser beam is monochromatic, meaning it contains only a single wavelength. A laser beam is also composed of coherent electromagnetic waves, meaning the spatial and temporal states of each electromagnetic wave are identical to one another. A laser beam has very low divergence, meaning it directs all its energy in a single direction. This allows it to travel long distances. A laser beam is more intense compared to other light sources, meaning it contains a greater number of photons 
photons, which increases the energy per unit area. A laser beam has a specific polarization direction, meaning the oscillation direction of its electric field is fixed and does not change over time. The intensity of a laser beam can be controlled by altering the parameters of its production method. Thanks to intensity control, a laser beam can be instantly produced with high intensity at a specific time and then reverted to its previous state to generate a laser pulse. These are the properties of a laser beam. These features make lasers a very useful light source. So how are these properties achieved? In fact, they are made possible by another feature of quantum mechanics. This feature ensures that when a photon interacts with an excited electron, it triggers the emission of a photon from that electron, allowing it to return to its stable state. The emitted photon and the photon that struck the electron have the same phase and also propagate in the same direction. These features depend on the principle of exciting many atoms simultaneously and enabling them to return to their stable state to produce photons in the same state. There are many laser production methods that work on this principle. Let's hunt the working principle of one of these methods, the helium-neon laser. The helium-neon laser is designed using forbidden transitions, metastable states, and the interaction of excited electrons with photons as we have learned. Helium atoms in their ground state contain two electrons with opposite spins in an orbital with zero angular momentum. If one of these electrons is excited, it transitions to a higher energy orbital depending on the excitation method. If the excitation method involves photons, the spin does not change, and the electron can immediately emit a photon and return to its stable state without encountering any forbidden transitions. However, if the excitation method involves accelerated electrons, one of the electrons in the helium atom, with spins initially opposite, can change its spin and transition to a higher orbital. In this collision, the probability of spin change is high because in nature, every system prefers a low energy state. When the spins of the electrons in the helium atom align in the same direction, the energy is lower due to spin interactions, making this state more likely. As a result of this excitation, the spins of the electrons in the excited helium atom are aligned. Therefore, the electron in the higher orbital has a very low probability of returning to the stable state due to the forbidden transition. This ensures that the helium atom remains in a metastable state. Since helium atoms in the metastable state can remain excited for a relatively long time, the probability of many helium atoms simultaneously exciting many neon atoms increases. The excited neon atoms quickly emit photons and return to their stable state. If one of these emitted photons strikes an already excited neon atom, the neon atom also transitions to its stable state and emits a photon with the same phase as the incoming photon. In this way, coherence is achieved. Monochromaticity is ensured because the laser producing atom is neon which produces electromagnetic waves of the same wavelength. For the same reason, polarization is also achieved. High intensity is a result of the fact that the emitted photons move in the same direction. If the neon atoms are surrounded by mirrors, with the cavity having only one exit aperture, all photons are directed in a single direction, achieving high intensity. This is the working principle of the helium-neon laser. By combining the mechanisms that enable these conditions, the helium-neon laser source is created. Finally, let's hunt the components of this source that satisfy this working principle. The helium-neon laser is a complex physical system designed to provide high precision and stability. The operation of this laser source relies on the harmonious functioning of various components. These components not only enable the fundamental working principles of the laser, but also directly impact its efficiency and success in various applications. The main components of the helium-neon laser are as follows. The central component of the laser, the laser tube, consists of a cylindrical structure typically typically made of glass or quartz that contains a mixture of helium and neon gases. The tube ensures the uniform distribution of the gases and the creation of a plasma environment. The gas mixture is generally prepared in a ratio of 85% helium to 15% neon. Helium atoms transfer energy to neon atoms, initiating the production of laser light. Electrodes connected to the ends of the laser tube are linked to an electrical discharge system to energize the gas mixture. This system creates an electric field along the tube, ionizing the gases. The electric field elevates helium atoms to their metastable energy levels, triggering the excitation of neon atoms through energy transfer. 
Typically, a power supply of 1 to 10 kilovolts is required to operate the laser, enabling the ionization of the gas. An optical resonator is used to amplify the laser light and ensure the beam travels in a single direction. A mirror at one end of the laser tube, with 99.9% .9 reflectivity, reflects light toward the opposite side of the tube to direct it properly. At the other end of the tube, a positive meniscus lens can optionally be used to further focus the emitted laser beam. Additionally, if a mirror with 90% reflectivity is placed at the output end, the intensity increases over time until it reaches a saturation point. This means that a high amount of energy can be delivered to a small area per second. Although Nikola Tesla could not predict the fundamental principles of laser technology, he envisioned similar ideas, such as the death ray, as a technological dream. The gas mixture used in the helium-neon laser is specially optimized. Helium atoms are easily excited to high energy levels during electrical discharge. This energy is then transferred to neon atoms, resulting in the production of laser light at a wavelength of 632.8 nanometers. Helium gas accelerates energy transfer, increasing the efficiency of the laser, while neon atoms form the active medium of the laser. The combination of these components allows the helium-neon laser source to produce a highly precise, monochromatic, and stable laser beam. The harmonious operation of the optical resonator and the gas mixture plays a critical role in determining the coherence, polarization, and linear properties of the laser. The operating principle of the helium-neon laser is based on the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics and the physical effects of forbidden transitions. These principles require us to understand and control fundamental laws of physics, such as angular momentum and spin conservation. The processes of electron excitation and transition to stable states, the creation of metastable states, and their role in photon production form the cornerstone of laser technology. The combined use of helium and neon atoms has enabled the creation of a highly efficient and controllable laser source.